All right, you can turn in your King James Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Um, I've had this request a number of times from people, and I've been wanting to get into it, wanting to study this in depth and really, you know, do a big study on this whole thing, do a big talk on it. And um, it's interesting when you go into studying the Word of God, a lot of times you have a preconceived notion of what you're going to find, and you come out and you say, okay, I didn't expect that. Just doing simple word studies. I know a lot of people, you know, that some of the uh, wicked people out there that have gotten on my case, you know, that I'm lazy because all I do is just go through and read word studies and things. No, that's actually how you study the scriptures. You let the scriptures speak. You don't go and say, well, what does this theologian say? And what does, you know, in, in um, you know, the Matthew Henry commentary, his note on this is such and such. And we know that the church council of, you know, that, you know, what does the Bible say? Let the Bible define different things. That's why you go through and you do word studies. What's the law first mentioned? How's the word the first time it's mentioned? A lot of times it defines it throughout the Bible. That's what you do. And you'll find that many times when you do that, and you let the word of God speak, that the writings of men will turn out to be false. And I'll be showing you that today. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11 now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. He's writing to Gentiles. He's not writing about the spiritual gifts, the apostolic, miraculous gifts. We'll get in more into that as we continue. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, always remember the thee, that's important, but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles. There you have it. Um... To another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Okay, now, I'm a dispensational preacher. I have been ever since I've been in ministry, and I will never change on that stand. And the typical dispensational thing is that uh, early on, after Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose from the dead, he comes back. He offers himself as the Messiah again, or rather the apostles. He gives them sign gifts to, out, to go out and confirm the word to the Jews there. We'll see about this in a little bit. We'll go to the scriptures to prove that. And that when the nation of Israel rejects as you know a whole people, there's still some that you know, individuals that can get saved at any time. But as the nation of Israel says, okay, we reject Jesus. He's not our Messiah. The sign gifts go away. And so any kind of you know, miraculous type of stuff, miracle type of stuff is gone. And so you have Acts as a transitional book where they're doing some of these sign gifts early on and then they start to go away. And by the time you hit 1 Corinthians 12 through 14, that's for the body of Christ. But when you get into some of the thing of the working of miracles, well, obviously that can't be for us today because it was kind of, kind of that original sign gift type of stuff. So this is sort of transitioning and whatever else. Uh, well, there's a problem there. You see, you can go through all the different gifts there in um, uh, verse 8 down through verse 10. Um, 8 through 10, it's talking about gifts that are all there for a Christian today. You can have all of those different gifts. And we'll talk a little bit more about this as we continue. But the one that people get stumped on is, you know, the thing of working of miracles. And so, you know, a lot of the Baptists, they come out and they'll say, well, you know, what do we do with that? Well, we'll just have to kind of say, well, that was there because the apostles are still there. We'll just kind of throw that into the whole thing there. Because, you know, miraculous healing was part of the sign gifts and whatever else. Well, yes, it was. But there's a lot more to working of miracles than just healing. See? It, you know, it's real tempting just to say, oh, well, uh, yeah, that's, that's actually written to Gentiles. And, 
kind of for us today, but this can't be there because it doesn't set up with our system. So we just have to kind of and get rid of it. That's the easiest thing to do. It's not for us, nothing to see here. Go on, move on to the next verse. <laughs> but it's a lot harder to actually go through the scriptures and say, what does the Bible say? What are miracles? How does the Bible define the word miracle? Where does it come from? Now let's go down to verse 27 of the same chapter. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27 through 31. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Are we the body of Christ? Members in particular? Yes, we are. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles... Miracles are coming after the apostles. Hmm, we'll show you that. Then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all the workers, are all workers of miracles. So it's not just apostles and miracles are synonymous. No, they're coming after the whole thing of apostles. Well, you believe in miraculous healing? Hold on, hold on. Okay, we're going to see that there's a lot more to miracles than just healing. As I said earlier, have all the gifts of healing? Gifts, plural, always remember that too. Do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Of course, that being charity. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 13. You go through the whole chapter there. It's very important. Uh, we're supposed to have charity. All right. So, what does... The Ruckman commentary say on this passage, what is the working of miracles? Does he get into this thing of the working of miracles? The working of miracles, this is page 251, the Ruckman commentary on 1 Corinthians. The working of miracles is gift 5, verse 10. It is obviously a sign. The miracles begin with the calling of the Jews out of the land of Egypt. That's what they are called. Okay? It's obviously a sign, so scrap it, forget it move on and that is all that he has on the thing of the working of miracles right down there at the bottom of the page one tiny little paragraph but then he has this whole thing written about healing let's see what he says here to another the gifts of healing okay verse 9 here he says it uh, right there where my finger is pointing Okay, to another, the gifts of healing. Now watch what he does. This is the fourth gift, singular, gift. He removes the S, listed. Now you've got to make a distinction. The first man that ever was ever healed in the scriptures was Moses. When he got healed, he put his hand in his bosom and it came out leprous. Then he put it uh, back and it came out whole. God called that a sign and the Jews require a sign. 1 Corinthians 1.22, we'll go to that here in a little bit. So obviously the gift of healing is a spirit gift that was only active in the church when God was dealing with Israel at the time of the apostles as he is at the time Paul writes 1 Corinthians. Apostles have all kinds of ways to get out of it. The Baptists say, well, now the doctors have the gift of healing. There are all kinds of ways you can mess around uh, with it. But let's just face it. These signs shall follow them that believe they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It doesn't say that they would put them in the cancer ward or put them under an oxygen tent or through therapy. They'll put hands on them and they shall recover. Now, if a man has the gift of healing, again, he's switching it to singular reference right there. Gift of healing. Uh, that's dishonest. That's not what the text says. It says gifts, plural, of healing. I'm not going to keep reading down through there, but he goes on down through and he gets into the, he's ripping on the charismatics because they say that they have the gift of healing. Yeah, well, that is corrupt. The charismatics, they don't have the gift of healing, the miraculous apostolic gift of healing. But that's not what the text says. He lied. He deceived on that. Okay? Um, why? Well, because he has his Baptist theology that he has to fit everything into that Baptist theology. Uh, the Bible doesn't say gift of healing. Okay? I'm going to say that one more time. Your King James Bible does not say gift of singular of healing it says gifts plural of healing now if that's referring to miraculous boom you're healed you don't need gifts for that 
read what Jesus was doing. He's going over and he's, re, you know, giving sight to the blind, recovering their sight. Boom, heals them. Here's a guy who's maimed, arm cut off or something. Boom, out comes an arm. Here's a guy that's uh, sick. Boom, heals him. Boom, boom. There's no gifts needed, plural. But when you get into natural health and you start to understand some things, you realize it's a lot more than just nutrition. Nutrition is one of the gifts of healing, plural. There's also herbology, herbalism, if you want to call it that, where there are certain herbs that are very, very medicinally potent and they can heal you. Hmm. There's also spices, different roots and, and things like that. Turmeric being one of them, ginger being another one. There's a lot of roots that are also very high in healing capabilities. And you get into really studying the in-depth type of a thing, um, nutrition, herbalism, uh, spices, um, tinctures, uh, essential oils, things like that. There are multiple areas of study within natural healing. And they are all part of the gifts of healing that God can give you as a Christian. Now, I'm going to tell you something, a little prophecy for you here. Eventually, I believe that China is going to go after Taiwan and there's going to be sanctions put on China and China is going to reverse them and say, okay, we'll put them back on you, America. And China makes 90% of the pharmaceutical drugs in this nation here in America. Hmm. I wonder if people are going to have a need to be healed in the future. I mean, if they're on drugs, they need to be healed right now. <laughs> Let's face that. Uh, drugs are symptoms management. They don't ever cure anybody. All right. Uh, we'll try to stabilize you with our drugs. And in reality, what they're doing is they're causing a chemical reaction in your body, which then messes other things up. And then you all of a sudden you're you get into polypharmacy where you're getting drugs to, you know, fix the side effects from the other drugs that are there to fix your problems. And, you know, you get somebody and they're on nine different drugs or, you know, prescription medications, well, that's a problem. That's not one of the gifts of healing that the Lord has provided. But what the Bible's talking about here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it's talking about those gifts of healing. You might have somebody that's really good at trauma-based medicine. Somebody out there in the battlefield and they get hacked really bad with a sword cut. Well, it's not just something you can, you know, rub some turmeric on it and hope for the best or something. I mean, you know, yarrow would be good, but there's still some need for suturing and making sure that the the veins did it hit any arteries or anything okay no the veins that you know they need to be um you know whatever you have to do in trauma i'm not really all that up on trauma based medicine but the whole point is there are many gifts of healing that can come in very well uh very as a good way to witness to people out there a good way to get them into a place where they realize they need the lord um, I knew of a situation, I was in the post office many years ago, and um, they were talking, and they actually said about how that there was a, uh, a, there was an older man, and he said about how that he was on his deathbed at one point in time, and he said, I thought like, I felt like I was dying, went to the doctor, they said, there's nothing more we can do for you, just kind of get ready to die, essentially, and he said there was some older woman and she was a herbal you know, expert on herbs. And he said she came and she was giving me these herbs and things and helping me out, out with different things. And, and he said, I got better. And I'm, he said, they only gave me a month or two to live. Then he said, I got totally better. And now I take this natural health stuff. And he said, I'm doing great. It was, you know, 10, 15 years earlier or something like that, that they said, you're almost going to die. What a great thing to be able to do for people. Gifts of healing is scriptural. So if the gifts of healing are there, and Ruckman's trying to say, well, we know that miracles, the working of miracles is just miraculous healing. And that's all that it is. That's not true. That is not true. And we're going to now look at the different references in scripture to the thing of um, what are miracles. And I'm going to show you the very first one has nothing at all to do with healing. Not one person got healed. Hmm. Exodus chapter 7. Exodus chapter 7. Verse 
verse 8 through 13. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh shall speak, Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Show a miracle for you, first time it shows up, show a miracle for you. Then thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Now look at this. Here's the interesting thing. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. Now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. Hmm. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. And he hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refuses to let the people go. Don't you just love that? I'm here doing a video and the guy's out here doing the sidewalk. Yeah, nice. So I apologize for any background noise there. Um, so what's the first miracle in the Bible? Did it have anything to do with healing? No. It had to do with throwing down a staff and it becomes a serpent. No healing to it. So you read about working of miracles in the New Testament you could be dealing with something that is not related to healing. An interesting thing there. Next, let's go to Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6, verse 49 through 52. And we'll look at another miracle here. Mark chapter 6, verse 49. But when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit and cried out, and they, for they all saw him and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them and saith unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And he went up unto them into the ship, and the wind ceased, and they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure and wondered. For they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. Huh, the miracle of the loaves. And you see, it's interesting because I believe this was another miracle here that Jesus Christ did, walking on the water. But they considered not the miracle of the loaves. Huh, they saw a miracle. Go to Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9, verse 38. We'll see another miracle here mentioned. Mark 9, verse 38, And John answered him, saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followeth not us, and we forbade him, because he followeth not us. But Jesus said, Forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our part. A man was casting out devils in the name of Jesus, but he wasn't with John the Baptist's little crew there. Maybe he wasn't a good Baptist or something pretty good joke uh, but he says hey he doesn't follow with us and Jesus said oh but it's a miracle he cast out a devil it's a miracle is that healing not really not really go to Luke 23 verse 8 Luke 23 verse 8 Now look at this. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad, for he was desirous to see him of a long season, because he had heard many things of him, and he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. Hmm. You know that uh, miracles can actually be falsely interpreted by the lost as just entertainment? Even Jesus' own disciples, if you remember what we just read not long ago, they, um, they didn't consider the miracle of the loaves. They saw it. They saw what happened. The feeding of thousands of people. Uh, and yet they didn't even consider it. They didn't think about it. Well, here you have Herod and he's saying, Oh, that, that sounded really neat. All these amazing things that Jesus is doing. I'd like to see the same thing. Come put on a show for me. You can be my court jester. You have to watch out for some of that stuff. Um, 
Lost people, a lot of times, will see it as entertainment. Hmm. John chapter 4. John chapter 4, verse 46 through 54. So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee, where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea unto Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. The nobleman saith unto him, Sir, come down, ere my child die. Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. Um, and he was now going down. His servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at, that same, at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed in his whole house. This is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he was come out of Judea into Galilee. Now, was that a, a miracle of healing? Yes. But it wasn't laying hands on the sick and they shall recover. Jesus didn't lay hands on him. He did another type of miracle. So, you know, again, a little strike against the whole Baptist thing of, oh, the miraculous healing of laying hands on the sick and the sick recover. That's all that that is. Eh, be careful. Be very careful. It's not what the Bible says. But let's look at the first miracle. John chapter 2. John chapter 2, verse 7 through 11. Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. This, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee, and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. Beginning of miracles. Was anybody healed? No. No. Nobody was healed. So how could you say, well, all the, the miracles there, they, they started with the Jews, you know, and the sign gifts that, that God gave to Moses and Aaron to convince Pharaoh that, you know, you need to let the Jews go. And so the, the miraculous healing is for the, it's a sign gift to the Jews and it's only for the Jews and it's not for us today. You can't make that jump from scripture. I'm sorry, but you just can't. That's an, un, it's an improper use of the Bible. You say, but I, I believe, brother, that it's still the miracles are for the, the Jews. They have to be there for the Jews. Maybe they might be here for us today, but only if you're around a Jew. We'll get back to that. Jump down to verse 23 of the same chapter. John chapter 2, verse 23 through 25. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover in the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. And Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men. And needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. <laughs> yeah, the Lord certainly does know what's in man. And it's not very good. John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The miracles are not there to convert people. Okay, in the sense of you committed, a, I did a miracle to you, you had enough faith that you believed and whatever else, and so now you're saved. No, um, the miracles are there just to simply show, hey, there's something different here. The working of miracles should lead people to a point of understanding that the Bible's true and you need to be born again. That's what Jesus Christ is saying to Nicodemus here. Um, okay, you're convinced by the miracles, but you must be born again. You're in your self-righteous pride there, Nicodemus. John chapter 12. John 
John chapter 12, verse 35 through 43. Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus, and departed, and did hide himself from them. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. Hmm. That the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report, and to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because that Isaiah said again, He hath blinded their eyes, and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. These things said Isaiah, when he saw his glory, and spake of him. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, and also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. A lot of people like that today. Profess to be saved and yet they you know, don't want to be put out of the church, you know, local church. Because they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. Don't want to bear the reproach of Jesus Christ. That's a little too embarrassing. Hmm. But it's an interesting thing there. How the Lord hides himself at certain points in time when he's going to judge a nation. Um... And it's not that he's, you know, hiding back behind the, the sofa or something. You know, you pull the sofa out and he goes, ah, 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 you know, no, that's not how he hides himself. He just says, okay. Gives him a spirit of blindness. Verse 40, he hath blinded their eyes and hardened their heart. People out there see it all the time. It's just so frustrating. I mean, you're looking and you're saying, the Bible's coming alive. Look at this. Look at that. Look at all these things. And well, whatever. You're weird. You're this, you're that. What's going on? God's hiding from them. We're heading towards national judgment. And even if you could do some miracles, if God gave you that ability, um, most people would just make excuses for it. I'll talk about that a little bit too here in a little bit. Let me switch my page here. So, now we go, we see, I th hope, hopefully I've proved from the scriptures that miracles are not always about healing. There are other times that miracles are given to show people things. Okay? Um, but who are the miracles for? You say, well, it has to be for the Jews. Miracles, miracles are for the Jews. That's why they're not for us today, because we're not dealing with the nation of Israel in terms of the, you know, the Messiah. And the... Just hold on. Acts chapter 2 Go to the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Any doubt that who to this who is being spoken to here? No. Ye men of Israel. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles hmm, and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you as ye yourselves also know. Ye men of Israel. Well, then it's to the Jews, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 1. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. So there you have it. Right there, all the proof that you need. The Jews require a sign, therefore, the sign gifts are for Israel. Uh, end of story, they've gone away because Israel rejected Jesus as their Messiah. So close your Bible, put it down, walk away. Story's over. Not quite. Okay. Um, Acts chapter 15. Go to Acts chapter 15 and verse 12. Acts chapter 15 and verse 12. Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. By the Gentiles. They're going to the Gentiles. Huh. So, um, I don't think you could make the case that it's just for the Jews. It's also for the Gentiles. <laughs> right out here now. Uh, sorry as we go through some of this noise here, but, um, so you can say, 
Well, the, the sign gifts are just given for, it's only for the Jews. It's, you know, the Jews require a sign, and so it was never for the Gentiles. Well, then what on earth do you do with Acts chapter 15, verse 12? You know, what miracles and wonders God wrought among the Gentiles? Okay, yes, the Gentiles were there. Acts chapter 6. Acts chapter 6, verse 8 through 15. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then there, there also, then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines, and Cyrenians, and Alexandrians, and of them of Cilicia, and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Then they suburned men, which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and caught, came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council and set up false witnesses, which said, This man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. And all that sat in the council looking steadfastly on him saw his face as, as it had been the face of an angel. <laughs> but again, you're seeing it there. Okay? Um, he's doing wonders and miracles before people that aren't all Jews. Now, there could have been some Jews there, but he's doing a lot among the Gentiles as well. Hmm. But it was the wisdom and the words that he spoke that really convicted them. It wasn't the miracles necessarily. Acts chapter uh, 8. Acts chapter 8, verse 5. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. So it wasn't just hearing what he was preaching. He was also performing miracles there. The working of miracles. For unclean spirits, notice the four, it's defining what went before. For, the miracles which he did, for unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, and they that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This is, man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. And when they believed Philip preach, uh, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Hmm. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. You gotta love that saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto them, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. And I've heard Baptists actually try to say, Well, Simon was a saved man. He just was a little bit... You know, no, his, his heart's not right with God. <laughs> uh, he's lost. He was a fake, false convert. He believed, but that doesn't mean that you're saved. If you believe, you can believe all kinds of things. That doesn't mean that God saved you. So, uh, verse 22, Repent therefore of this thy wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. Why would he say that if he had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Hey, you know what? You're in sin out there. 
you're not right. I just proved it. I caught you doing whatever else. You need to get right with God. Oh, Brother Brian, could you please pray for me? No, I'm not going to pray for you. It's between you and God, you see. If Simon was genuinely saved, if he was gen genuinely born again, he wouldn't have said to Peter, um, please pray for me. Please pray that none of this stuff that you said is going to happen to me. You pray to God. So anybody comes out and tries to tell you that Simon the sorcerer there, he was saved. He was truly saved. He just was a little carnal. They don't understand the scriptures. Okay, Simon was not a saved man. Verse 25, And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. So, there you have that. Um, Acts chapter 19. Going through a lot of scriptures today. And a lot of sidewalk cleaning too, apparently. <laughs> Acts chapter 19, verses 8 through 12. And he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. And when divers were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of the way that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia, heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. I'm going to read in two here. Okay, verse 12. Um, and God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs of aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. So you see there, again, the miracles that are happening. And this is definitely later on in you know, the transitional nature of the book of Acts. So, but let's go to another book of the Bible. We'll see if these miracles continue. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evident, evidently set forth crucified among you? This only would I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are ye so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, Hmm. Doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? So the miracles are there again, this time to the believers in Galatia. Huh. That's kind of interesting. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For, for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and obedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? God also bearing the witness both with signs and wonders, and with divers miracles. Hmm and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. Now, dispensationally, this is talking to Hebrews. That's why it's called Hebrews, the book of Hebrews. Um, and it's written to Hebrews that are specifically going into the time of Jacob's trouble. And I believe in context what's going on here is this is being spoken to them as sort of the reason you didn't escape this time of Jacob's trouble. You could have, had you gotten saved, you would have gone up and caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble. But the reason you didn't is because, you know, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? They neglected there the great salvation that Jesus Christ offered them. That's why they have to go into the time of Jacob's trouble, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. The many witnesses, 500 brethren at once, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 talks about that. There were many witnesses there. And I'm one of the witnesses of Jesus Christ. I'm one of the ones that preaches to everybody out there, including to the Jewish people. 
But look at verse 4. God also bearing them witness, the people that witness for Jesus Christ, both with signs and wonders and with divers, miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. Again, the gifts that are mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapters 12 through 14, those gifts are clearly for us, including the plural gifts of healing, I might add, uh, not a singular gift of healing, and to lump miracles with gift of healing and make it into one thing that the charismatics try to mimic or whatever else, um, that doesn't work. And let me just say this, too, on the whole thing of 1 Corinthians 12 through 14, you say, what about the, the speaking in tongues? Do you believe in speaking in tongues? Well, absolutely, I believe in speaking in tongues. As I've said many times, I'm speaking in tongues right now, or a tongue right now. You say, what's that? The English tongue. Auf Wiedersehen. There. I just uh, spoke in another tongue. Um, buenos dias. There is another tongue. See? Three tongues all within a few you know, seconds here. <laughs> um, I don't know of many other languages or anything else. I could probably come up with a few more, but I think you get the point. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse or 1 Corinthians chapters 12 through 14 there are two things mentioned in regards to tongue diverse kinds of tongues and the interpretation of tongues show me interpretation of tongues in the early part of the book of acts acts chapter 2 is the favorite one that charismatics go to and yet the tongues are all listed there the different languages but there's no interpretation they're saying how hear we every man speak in our own tongue wherein we were born and there was no need for interpretation. But you get some of the brethren, and they are very good at learning different languages out there. They're very talented at that. And the interpretation of those languages or tongues as well. So do the charismatics fake a lot of the sign gifts and things? Well, of course, they have to. They're not saved people. Um, but in terms of working of miracles, you just can't say, well, okay, you can make an argument for prophesying, you can make an argument for speaking in tongues, but we just have to scrap the miracle thing because it's tied to healing and when it's not. And so we just can't do miracles anymore. Um, let me just try to prove a point here, what I'm trying to say with this. Um, do I believe that miracles could be done today? Yes, I do. But here's our problem. We're too uh, <clears throat> scientific. Uh, what do I mean? Okay, I take a, do it this way. I'm going to take this, I don't have a rod here. Uh, I don't have any kind of a big stick or anything like that. Um, I can get this stinking thing out of my pocket. Here's a pencil, okay? I'm going to take this thing, I'm going to throw it on the ground, and it's going to become, I'll just say an earthworm, you know? Whack, and I throw it down there, and I take the camera, and I say like this. You know what people would think? They would say, well, that's, uh, you, you had that all planned. That's not actually where you threw the pencil. That's where you had an earthworm laying there. And it, it, say, okay, then I'll actually do it again. This time I'll, I'll throw it down and I'll actually have the camera pointed so you see when it hits it becomes an earthworm or a snake or something. We'll just use the biblical thing. I don't, this isn't a rod, but, you know. I, take, I go out and I get a stick and I say, okay, I'm going to go outside here. Watch. Three different camera angles. I throw the stick down and it becomes a snake. You know what people would say? They'd say, that's video editing. He just did that. It's some kind of special effect or some other thing like that. You do it in person. Take a lot of the miracles that we read about today. Um, turn water into wine. Right in front of everybody. Like the Lord did. Well, I, um, you know, well, I think, you know, because of the weather patterns out there, I think it must be a an El Nino weather pattern event or climate change, and that's why the water at this particular time on this particular uh, thing, it comes in and actually tastes like wine and kind of looks like it, but we know that it's not really, and it's, you know, or, uh, um, you know, that's what people would do. Um, I have seen miracles in my life. I have seen times where the Lord has stretched the food that we've had, kind of like he did when he fed the, you know, thousands of people out there with the bread and the little bit of fish. I've seen how the Lord will stretch food. I've seen the one time when he moved to Maine, uh, the straps came off of the, that were holding the wheels down on my truck on the car hauler trailer thing. And I don't even know how long we were going like that. And the truck never came off, never fell off. Um, 
never even moved. <laughs> the straps didn't even, you know, fall off, come flying off the trail or anything else. They just stayed right there. Finally got up here and, oh, they're not even hooked up. Wow. I've seen a lot of things like that. Um, but I think it's, you know, one of the key aspects to God using you is you have to live by faith. And I think that that's one of the biggest problems that we don't, why we don't see more people working miracles. That gift that's there, it's not a sign gift, brethren. Um, it's just not. And I think it would be a lot more available to us if we had better faith. And if we didn't see everything as just nuts and bolts, scientific explanation for this, there's a rational explanation. We've lost that supernatural connection. And I'll tell you another big reason. Because this book is just paper and ink to most people. This book is not a holy book. It's not supernatural. And well, that's just your interpretation of the book, and it's just this, and that. You know, it's not. It's not as important as Jesus. It's just a. It's just a book and whatever. Then, if you don't have faith in this book, what this book says, how in the world is God going to use you to perform miracles, to work miracles in front of people? I think we're in such a rough physical, spiritual, well, physical too, spiritual condition that God just simply says, no, I can't do miracles through you. Um, let that sink in because that's a very sharp rebuke um, to all of us. Now, I will tell you right now, I'm not going to do the little, we all doubt the, the King James Bible. We all think, I believe this book is holy. I believe this book here is there's supernatural things in this book. I, this book here has judged me. This book can read my mind. This book is amazing. The King James Bible. You want to call me a bibliolater? Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I'm a bibliolater. Okay. I believe this book's a, an amazing thing. Now, if it was an idol to me, by the way, I wouldn't be holding it this way. I wouldn't have, you know, all the collars and things in there and writing in it and all the other stuff that I do. Okay. Uh, so, you know, it's not an idol to me, but the whole point is I believe it's God's book. I believe it's supernatural. Would I like to be able to, to be able to have miracles wrought by my hands in the future? Yes. And it could be that that will come back for a little bit of time. But uh, the real danger is when miracles do come back in the book of Revelation, um, there's a particular man that's uh, performing those miracles. Revelation chapter 13. Revelation 13, verse 11 through 14. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven in the sight on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. He does miracles? Yes, kind of the same way that uh, Janus and Jambres, you learn about them, their names in the New Testament, the magicians of Pharaoh, they were able to throw their staffs down and turn them into serpents. There's a spiritual realm out there, brethren. Um, don't get so into your technologies and whatever else that you forget that that exists. Don't get so uh, scientific that you try to explain everything away with just nuts and bolts. Revelation 16 I think if we would open up our minds and, and open up ourselves and apologize and repent before the Lord for just rejecting His Word so many times. Well, yeah, I, I believe the Lord can do this stuff in the Bible, but my life right now, well, you know, times have kind of changed. Why have times changed? I'm not talking about that there were sign gifts that were given the, the end of the book of Mark. Yeah, sure, those are sign gifts. Laying hands on the sick and then recovering, those are sign gifts. Um, the speaking in tongues, the prophesying, a lot of that other stuff in terms of, you know, really re or really nearby events and things I'm saying. We do still do have some ability to prophesy. But some of those things that were given there, drinking any deadly thing and it, it won't hurt you and taking up 
serpents and they won't hurt you. Um, that's not for today. I do not believe that because it's not in 1 Corinthians 12 through 14, chapters 12 through 14. But uh, working of miracles, I think that that could be here if we just have enough faith. Revelation 16, verse 13 through 14. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. There you go. Interesting that uh, you have, they say, is there, you know, the Trinity is in the Bible. Um, well, actually it is. Uh, Revelation chapter 16, verse 13. We just read it. There you have the, the three, three different persons. But look at verse 14. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. You see, the tricky thing about the time of Jacob's trouble is it isn't just, uh, hey, you know, all scientific, big brother, high tech, 6G, super duper, smart city, all this other stuff. There will be a return to some really spiritual things there. Um, the And I think a big part of it, one of Satan's little card tricks that he could play is, um, is the thing of alien disclosure. When you start to have fallen angels coming down and whatever else, and these devils, spirits of devils, going out working miracles, um, what if they start going out and working miracles? It's kind of a sick thing to think about, brethren. Kind of a, another really bad kick on us. Um, we should be the ones working miracles. But instead we're so concerned about our jobs and our debts and all of the little things that we get all that are just so important to us um, and a reputation. Got to watch out for that one. And uh, we aren't doing the miracles. And um, when the miracles come back, it's pretty much going to be false prophet and the spiritual devils. Now, you know, Moses and Elijah, they'll be there. They'll be doing some miracles, but... Um, hmm. Should pray about it. Revelation 19. One more verse to go to here. Revelation chapter 19, verse 20. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he had with, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and then that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. Yeah, the miracles are going to come back. Uh, how much will we be able to do as the body of Christ? I think that depends on faith. Um, faith in what God has written. I see no scriptural support for uh, what is being taught here. I don't see any. It's the gift of healing and it's a sign gift. It's a miraculous gift. Therefore, we can't have the working of miracles is in relation to healing. So we can't do it. I'm sorry, but that is very sloppy exposition of Scripture on Peter Ruckman's part. Uh, he came out and he was saying that the one verse in Psalms is the middle verse of the Bible or whatever else. And it wasn't. It was wrong. I was repeating it. And, um, and somebody said, you know, it's not the real middle verse. And they said where it was. And, and you know, it was in Ruckman's commentary. And he said, well, yeah, I, I said that falsely because we didn't have computers back in the old days. Now we have computers. We can tell better what the middle verse of the Bible is. And I went and I said, that's nonsense. And I, and I took my King James Bible and I added up every single, I'd go to the end of each chapter and I'd write down the number, write down the number. And I went through it, took me a whole evening, about four hours. I don't even know what it was, three or four hours of time. Went through the whole King James Bible, start to finish, Genesis to Revelation. How many verses are in the King James Bible? Wrote all the numbers down, got to the end, took my calculator, added everything up. Okay, divide it in half went right to the real middle verse. So this whole thing of, well, you know, before we had computers, we couldn't tell what the middle thing. You get busy in preaching and teaching, and I get that, um, and especially if you get some stupid church building because they can really make you busy with a lot of nonsense of dealing with people's problems and come here to visit this person and all this other stuff, all this socialism that you get into with the church buildings. But... <laughs> If you aren't going to do the study, if you aren't going to put the time into it, then just be quiet about it. Don't just repeat things. And I mean, we all do. I get it. I have grace for Ruckman. I have 
you know, please have grace for me. I've repeated stupid things and I come out later and I think, you know, I always say chapter and verse. And one of you pointed out on the live stream that I should be saying book, chapter, and verse, please. That would be more accurate. Um, another one of you wrote me a letter and said you shouldn't say I couldn't care less. It's, or, uh, it should be I could care less, I think is what it was. <laughs> um, or I couldn't, I, I forget how it was. I'm sorry, I'm right at the end of the sermon. This wasn't part of what I had written. <laughs> but we all make mistakes. We all need to be corrected from time to time including me. Uh, there's plenty of times I've needed to be corrected. Absolutely. But uh, the whole point is, working in miracles, is it for us today? I don't see any scripture that says no. I really don't. I look through the 1 Corinthians 12 through 14 right here. I look through it. Looks like it's for us. I don't see any kind of scripture. Where, oh, no, you know, what's well, not really. It's for us. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 through 14, every bit of it, all those gifts of the Holy Spirit. Um, I'm hoping, my prayer is to see these modern church people uh, go away. Um, and I don't mean get called up either. I mean, uh, or cast down by the Lord because they're just faking it. They don't even believe this King James Bible. They hate this King James Bible. Uh, that, that disturbs me. I don't want those people walking around and messing things up for the lost people out there. Lost people have enough sense. They look at the church building thing and they say, don't want anything to do with that. Bunch of hypocrites. Ugh, just, ugh. Good for them. Good for them. And I hope that those church people go away. I'm pointing like that out towards the world, but there's actually an old Baptist church right there where I'm pointing. Um, that's uh, They was used for a library and now it's not that anymore. It's uh, just needs to be repaired. It's falling apart. So, uh, but maybe, hey, I can, maybe I can buy it and then I can have people come here and worship me, you know. I don't think so. So that's going to be it. Hopefully I've answered everybody's questions out there. Uh, the working of miracles is not solely about miraculous healing. That is a lie. Um, the working of miracles, it's not for us today. It's, you know, that's not true. I see no scripture for that. Um, and I think, quite frankly, if we increase our faith in the Word of God and say, Lord, if you want me to work miracles, absolutely. Um, in terms of healing and things like that, um, prayer is a very big part of healing. It isn't all just, uh, you know, herbs and all the natural health type of stuff that, that we practice on a regular basis. It isn't just that. It can also be prayer. And I think that laying your hands on the sick and and taking care of people and things and saying, you know, I'm going to keep praying for you. I think God can miraculously heal people. Now, not just a thing of to show, boom, and they're, they're healed and whatever else. I question that one because that's kind of more into the Sign gifts of the apostles and the charismatics. Oh, we have it. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. These charismatics are always doing it in their little church buildings. They never go to the hospital and do it. So they're a bunch of fakers. But um, I believe that the, the gift of or the working of miracles, I do believe it's for today. We've just been so programmed to think of everything as there's a rational explanation for everything. It couldn't be supernatural. Just like what most people do to the King James Bible. There's a rational explanation. It's just naturalistic textual criticism. It's just a book like any other book. We can change it. We can update it. We can do whatever. You don't mess with this book. This is a supernatural book. So that is going to be it. Did you need to say something? Yeah. Um, I have prayed for that back, and that is about almost back to normal. Okay. See if I can say that again. I have prayed for Dad's back, and that's almost back to normal. All right. Yes, he has. Um, try to get this thing back to where it was. There we go. Something like that. Um, yeah, my son. We've been teaching him about the Bible, and and um, he's been praying for my back a lot, and it's just about back to normal now. So. Um, Yes, there is power in prayer. Um, we can see miracles and things there. So, 
But uh, stand by the book, brethren. And I, I hope you get a just forget all these stupid people that try to come along and cast all this doubt into your mind about the King James Bible. Uh, well, you know, where was the perfect Bible before 1611? Erasmus was a Roman Catholic. There are some places where it's not clearly translated. There's this, there's that. And they come up with all these doubtful, doubtful disputations to turn you away from the King James Bible. I've answered them over the years in my studies. But, you know, maybe at some point in time, I'd like to actually write a book on just answering these attacks from these wicked people. New versionists, they have the same spirit across the board. All new versionists that I've ever met that are hardcore, that understand that there's differences between their Bible and this one, all new versionists will make it a priority to destroy your faith in the King James Bible because they hate this book. They'll say, well, I believe in it. I, it's a wonderful book. And they'll do all this stuff. But, then comes a little billy goat thing in there. But, I can prove that there are errors in it. I can prove it's not been accurately translated. I can prove, I can prove, I can prove. And they just try to tear this thing down. Do a little wicked hireling in, up in Bridgewater, pastor of a full gospel assembly there. I rebuked him, whatever rebuked him, got in his face and things because I had a rock concert for the, you know, town and whatever else. I used to have the video up online. It's I think it might still be on another channel. But the point is, and he bragged, he bragged in the comments. We were going back and forth after I posted the video. He bragged, he said, there was an old man in the area and I he believed the King James Bible was God's word and I convinced him that it wasn't. And he was proud of that. Genuinely proud of destroying an older man's faith in the Word of God. That's what these guys do. I've seen it. I'm related to some that do that. That they just want to take the Word of God out of people's hands. Call my beliefs garbage. And yet they won't debate me. They sit down and have a discussion on it. I don't mean a formal debate or anything. I think that that stuff's wicked. Just a bunch of fleshly nonsense. But I've seen this thing with these guys. They don't want to get into manuscript evidence because I've studied it. So that is going to be it. And um, let's be open to what the Lord wants to do with us in the future. But I'm going to tell you right now, um, there's a separation coming. The thing of the Lord separating the wheat and the tares, I believe that's in the time of Jacob's trouble. But the Lord has a way of kind of setting things up first, and we're going to try it now, and then we'll make the real thing happen later on. Um, the beginning of SAR is where we're currently at, um, is a reflection of what will be coming in the future. Wars and rumors of wars, but the real wars are going to come in the time of Jacob's trouble. Famines that we're going to be going into right now. Many other countries are already in famines. Again, remember that this whole Russia-Ukraine conflict thing, they're cutting off the food supplies and it takes a couple months for that food on the big cargo ships to get to your country. You say, well, we still have food in the grocery stores. Yes, because you see the food that's been cut off over there right now, that it was just in March or in April right now, mid-April. It's going to take a couple months. By this summer, it's going to be really rough. But not nearly as rough as the time of Jacob's trouble. You see what I'm saying? So, God says there's going to be miracles in the time of Jacob's trouble. What if the miracles start to come in now? And that the body of Christ will start to say, here's some working of miracles. But only after God starts to eliminate these false modern church people. Get them out of the way. And now there's a bunch of people walking around saying, what am I supposed to do? I can't get medication. I'm going through all this withdrawal. What do I do? Hi, I have the gifts of healing. Oh, and by the way, let me show you some miracles too. Wouldn't that be something? You say, oh, brother, is it... be not faithless. Don't doubt what the Lord could do through you. But uh, if you're messing around with sin, if you have a spirit of unbelief, towards that beloved book, the King James Bible. How's the Lord going to use you? I pray that this has been a challenge to you and that you seriously consider what I'm saying. Um, we are headed into some really wild times and uh, you start getting into some of the stuff that could be showing up and whatever else and you think, whoa boy, it could get really bad. It could get really crazy. Um, we might go be, be going back to the working of miracles. 
and um, uh, you know, as time goes by, the hospitals and the medical establishment are, you know, becoming very corrupt. Um, <laughs> I think you're kind of crazy to go to those places anymore. Uh, some bad stuff going on there. I mean, just you know, even the just iatrogenic stuff stuff is you know where people are being killed by doctors because the doctor leaves his surgical you know instruments inside him and sews them up or something or you know prescribes them the wrong drugs or I mean we've all known of people that have died in the hospital because something was not given to them or whatever else they're misdiagnosed um, what if it comes back the working of miracles including one of them being healing of people because we are we're supposed to have the gifts plural of healing be open to it brethren I'm telling you right now um, so that is going to be it and uh, we'll see you in future studies thank you very much for watching King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008 our YouTube channel has never been monetized and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5 verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.